wanna go? Let's race. Let's go. You wanna go? Come on, bro. You have a discount, do you? Well, I got my discount. Don't fuck with my discount. <laughs> Let's go. Why is the box moving? Uh, uh, it's the box has got a ghost in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, thanks for following along. Uh, if you haven't seen my other videos, I uh, should have a playlist. I'll put that link up here. But I have this '99 Dodge Dakota. Um, I blew up the '59 in it. Busted a ring land on it. I uh, sold all that stuff, and now I'm LS swapping it. So, got a motor over there. That's junk. We're going to use Travis's motor. It has like 300,000 something on it. So, the rings are gapped. Uh, he sold it to me as a 5.8. Um, so, and we're putting a six speed in it. I got a T56. Um, but, the truck's obviously an automatic because it's an RT. So what we're going to do is I bought pedals out of a manual Dakota. Uh, so we had to put them in. So this video is the start of that project. Um, so right now we're going to take off the master and try and get the brake booster out. Um, I did get a package from Rock Auto. I don't remember what I did with it. And I found it. This should be the master cylinder. I always like these magnets. Looks like a Mercury. Anyways, master cylinder for the clutch for the red truck. And then extra spark plugs for the blue Dakota. If you haven't seen that video, put a link up here card whatever you call it because I broke one and I got two different boxes it's supposed to be the same three of us yep same part number but anyway we got a clutch master for the Dakota and then I bought a new clutch slave for a Camaro um, that should be one of these boxes and then I'm going to have a have a or buy a braided stainless hydraulic hose. We got some new goodies from Summit. The timing chain set, double roller. I've been buying parts when I what do we got here? We got a seal. I bet you that's for the LS timing cover in the front or the back. Up oh, right here. Lux. This is for the Camaro. So luckily, the fittings, if you're doing a swap, for clutch stuff, it's pretty much the same. So on a Dakota, it has, well, I guess it doesn't show it on here. But uh, I'll take a screenshot from Google right here. So that goes in here, the little O-ring. Well, they make a AN fitting adapter fit in here. Picture for that here. And then you can run a braided hose from this to a T56 hydraulic throwout bearing, which is this guy that plugs into this fitting. And these are weird, weird fittings. Um, it's like a push lock kind of thing. And then this is how you bleed it to this guy. And this actually sucks to bleed it. You can actually buy adapters where this can go to a hose. You bleed it from the hose instead of, instead of from here. But so, but that's how we're gonna hook up the hydraulics. So let's get back to pulling the 
break master out. Okay, I have misplaced my little tripod, so you're gonna bear with me. But what we're gonna do is take that nut, that nut off. They are 15 millimeters, by the way. It looks like that's also where the shifter cable goes through because it's automatic. That is also where the clutch master cylinder goes. So we'll have to disconnect the automatic shifting cable as well. So. Um, let me set you down and I'll get those nuts loose. Okay, we got two nuts off. Like I said, they are 15 millimeter. While we're under here, let's try and get those nuts off. Should be four, that's what holds the booster on. Yeah, it's not much room up there. And then we gotta get the whole aluminum bracket out somehow. I don't even know. I don't know if the dash has to come out or what yet. <laughs> it's great. All right, I got all four bolts out of the master cylinder. That one up there sucks. Now we're gonna take the brake clip off that little guy. And theoretically we should be able to pull the booster out. Got the clip off. That was pretty easy. You just gotta pull this up and then it slides out that way. So now it's loose. Uh, for you guys that work at Old Mopars, my charger, 69 charger, has five studs. And that fifth one was hard to get to. This I'm pretty sure only has four. So let's try and get that out. I don't want to have to do this, but I have to break the fittings on the uh, brake master. Um, typically, most cars, I think, at least trucks, were like, you got to take the cab off to do service. Um, it's braided so that you can take it and it folds over so that you can work on it. But apparently Dodge decided it's dependable enough where you don't have to pull the cat. Of course on these old Dakotas you don't have to do that. Look at all that room. It's really actually not that heavy. Now I'm also glad I am doing this with the motor out. Because this would be difficult to do it with a motor in it. Even though um, there's plenty of room in this in these older Dakotas. So let's see if we can get this cover out. Looks like the remote start guy Put his wires through there. Oh, that does not want to come out. Let's use some persuasion. Looks like it can come apart, maybe. Or should I cut it and just commit to this manual? I'm sure you can get more shifter cables, right? Yeah, this is the magnetic switch, I think. Well, maybe it's for the alternator. Alright, so it doesn't look that hard. I figured it'd be much further up on the dash, but it is right here. So it comes out up over. There's the bracket. I already pulled the clip off. Yeah, this wiring sucks. That literally just pops off 
And you're gonna see it before I will. But it looks like there's just clips like that spread out. I don't know if even you can see it. I'm gonna try and get it with some channel logs. All right, shift the cables out. I'm glad I didn't cut that. Um, but yeah, there's the two things that split out to hold it in there. Just push those back and um, yeah, we're good. So let's pull it out. Always pull out. Cables out. Okay, so I pushed prop rope on there. I'm just not ready. Prop rod. It looks like it won't come back out once I push it in there. So um, yeah, that should fit right in there. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, so we'll tighten that down, but we gotta finish swapping out the pedals. So that fits in there good. I don't have a reservoir. I haven't decided if that's gonna be separate or I'm just drilling tap the bottom of the brake and just use it all together. It'll make it look a little stealthy too. So, all right, that fits. Let's see how we get the pedal box out. <clears throat> all right, so this is where I'm at now. I just took this out. I thought I broke it taking it out because there was no wires on it. This is for the, this, this should be the, yeah. See, I'm changing gears. I pull on it. And we're changing gear. <laughs> Neutral drop. <laughs> But yeah, it just uh, it just kind of sits in there, kind of docks on those whatever. So yeah, so we got to take the steering column out. So that sucks, but that might be good because um, I should probably find a manual column because we're not going to need this guy anymore. I don't know. That would look kind of weird. Back. I had to run an ace and get some long Torx bits. Why do you ask? Well, because. I got the steering column loose, and yes, I also took the seat out. That was definitely worth it. Uh, one, I can clean the carpet, and two, I will have more room to work. Let's turn that tube of death off. Uh, so yeah, so there's Torx bits way down in there. You see those? Yeah. So my, all, all the Torx things I got are on a, You know, look like this. Those aren't gonna fit in there, right? So, of course, Ace is gonna be super expensive. Uh, this is thirty-seven dollars for this, but I do like the case. Pulls out. Always pull out. Nice. Um, but it's my birth month, and I had a ten-dollar off gift card thing, so I used that. So let's get these out. All right, that worked. And it was the first Torx. It was a T20. That's what you need. If you go to the store and you only buy one, so to buy a whole pack, buy the T20. Um, but yeah, steering column's out. Uh, I had to unhook all these wires. Those are all underneath the covers. Columns out. It was fairly easy. This little cover here to get this off to get to the connector kind of sucked, but it is an eight millimeter socket to get this part out. So I guess I better look for a new column. Ooh, I wonder if, I wonder if I'll just take this piece off, right? I mean, I don't need it. Let's cut that pin out or something. Hmm. Or keep it, and this could be like my two-step. All right, so I don't have much time. Let's try and get this bracket out. Uh, looks like maybe those two bolts right up there. Four bolts. All right, great news. It's loose. Let me put you down and I'll try to get it out. Well, that's out. That's easier than I thought it'd be. Uh, let's see what time is it. 4.30, I started around three. So an hour and a half for all that. It's not bad. Set them up. Uh, that's not good. They look different. Let's 
see the this is where the column screws to hmm everything else looks the same though I wonder if we can just swap shafts but we could do that this is this little split pin we're not split pin what do you call those everything else looks the same hmm okay well i think that's gonna sum it up for this video i gotta get going i gotta some more moving to do so anyway thanks for watching we'll have uh another update on this soon uh because i need to get get it swapped to manual pedals and then get the motor cam all that shit in there springs get the trans mounted clutch in and get it in there maybe try and fire it before i move out of here uh Rudy took a bunch of shit out if you've been a subscriber i know it probably doesn't look like we got a lot out but um yeah we're getting there winnebago's getting a new roof New vinyl roof. I guess it's a, a kit. Uh, the guy, um, the club bought, Ryan bought. Um, yeah. So if you're new, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're old, thanks for sticking with us. Um, so what we're going to try and do here soon is try and get, obviously, the pedals in, the motor trans in, get all the motor work done, um, You know, get the sloppy stage 2 cam in, pack 12, 18 springs, get it cleaned up a little bit. Um, I don't know if I get it running before I get out of here, at least try to. Uh, one thing I haven't bought yet is the Holly Terminator for it, which I think that's what I'm gonna run, run on it. I do have a stock ECU I could put on it, but why? Um, but yeah, Old Blue, the LS swap is on hold for that. That's getting the 5.3 and a 60E, which will probably be this 5.3, um, but this one needs freshened up. Um, if you watch, the video where we're setting this up it's got a dead spot like a tight spot in when you turn it over so plus the cam cam bearings are white but i know a lot of people don't worry about that <laughs> if you don't look at it it's not a problem uh, but yeah so project x winter dakota running driving hopefully uh ls1 swapped barstool go-kart so you'll sit up here uh you'll kill yourself back here uh I got spindles for the front here. I need to get, get that going. That will probably finish in the garage this winter. Um, and then my CNC mini mill. That'll be another thing we're gonna, gonna try and finish up. So I actually have another video on the channel. I'll try and put that up here. Probably won't be right away, but when I get time, I'll put the card to that. So thanks for watching. This is Fixer Fab.